Hi guys, it's me again. So what we'd like to look into this video, how to manage Instant AP fully from Airway Manage Platform. Initially, when you add the access point, Instant AP would like, uh, would like access point to be read only as best practice. Once you enable the Instant uh, AP uh, or Instant GUI, uh, what happens really, the AP will be moved from being read only into full control. And uh, once we have full control over the Instant AP, we can do all the configuration from the Instant AP of the Instant AP from the actual airway. So let's have a look at how to achieve that. There's a class of single Instant AP. You can see the AP now. We're gonna go and add the details of uh, of Airwave, the management platform. The organization string is an option. Um, this is now site one. Uh, dot building uh, colon building one that will create a group called site one and will create um, two folders one site one and a subfolder is a building one you provide the IP address of the airwave server and then you provide a shared key that will be used for the communication once you've done this you save it and that will uh, within within a minute or so if you go to the actual airwave you will find that a folder has been created the and a subfolder will be created as well as a site has been created as you can clearly see here now there's one new device as a default behavior we're going to add that device which is our instant ap and they can clearly see where the folder goes and what group it is you add that will cause the ap to go to group as you can see group site one and folder site one subfolder building one so that you will end up in a subfolder called building one inside the folder inside the top folder that will cause the ap to communicate why communication wants to go down a little bit but doesn't mean that it is down you give it a minute or uh, a minute or so that then will show up later on once it shows up it will be seen as two uh, devices inside that folder the reason one being the controller, one being the access point functionality, you can see the configuration is good. The lock means it is read only. So now we go to the group itself. We are going to change uh, the details of that group and we will enable the instant GUI interface. So here again, remember it's all good. Locked means it's read only and for firmware upgrade. We are going to change that behavior. We will make Airwave uh, be able to fully manage that specific or those specific devices inside that data group. You go to the wrench and then you scroll down. You go to uh, enable instant GUI config. This means that the devices in that group will be fully managed by, uh, by Airwave. Once you do that, you will notice if you try to look into a local if you try to look into a local interface of the access point, you will notice that you cannot make changes because the reason for that, because now we are fully managed by Airwave. Now we're gonna also show you how to create, we, we should show an example of how to create, um, uh, you know, a network. So we're gonna create a network and this is just to confirm that this is, um, fully managed by the airwave. So here we can see, imagine if that group had multiple uh, clusters would have been seen as multiple clusters, but this group only has a single cluster. You can see here, and the configuration, the lock has gone. The lock has gone, it means that this is read on, not read only, this is fully managed by airwave. So you can clearly see uh, the lock is gone. Right, now what we need to do, we go to the actual group, click on the group, and you click on the instant config that has become available. This is a list of virtual controllers. Now we need to go to menu, add a network, or you can make any other settings if you would like to do so. We would like just to demonstrate the fact that I can create a network. And I will show you also one extra settings that we can assign the VLAN dynamically. So the network would be given a name. So, um, we give it a name secure WLAN. We go next, and then we will decide who will assign an IP, which is um, a DHCP server externally. And in this example, we will assign static VLAN. 
as per our infrastructure this will go to vlan 51 so this is vlan 51 that will um, terminate or the client will end up in having an ip in vlan 51 and we would like to make it um, enterprise uh, settings and they will go uh, we add a new authentication server by default the only one server that exists is the internal authentication server we add a new one which is now we give a name a clear pass and assign the ip address for that clear pass um, and then provide the shared key that would be used to communicate or secure uh, the communication between clear pass and the NAT device which is instant ap you go next and we are not really going to any uh, restrictions now we have created a network it will show up in a second if you go to the instant ap interface local interface you notice the network exists now as per what we have created we can go to the command line and issue the command show network you will notice that the network is listed here it is an employee type and uh, there are no restrictions now if we would like to make the VLAN assignment as a dynamic, we can do so. So we're going to change the default VLAN one and we will have certain conditions. We'll try to make it simple. We will base our conditions based on the username. So we will uh, put the first condition. If the username contains user, then the VLAN that will be assigned for that specific connection would be VLAN 51 in this case. And we'll add another condition if the VLAN or the um, username equals um, a different name. So uh, contains in this case contract. And I would assign VLAN to 05. So simply speaking, we kind of create two conditions to dynamically assign the VLAN. This is nice if you have a situation where you would like to have a dynamic kind of assigning assignment for VLAN. Uh, in a small to medium sized environment you don't want to have to implement really expensive uh, NAC authentication server you probably can go and use the internal capability now we try so we connect the client to the SSID secure WLAN we can we will scroll down connect to secure WLAN with a username user and password is whatever password you will notice the properties of that connection that will end up in VLAN 51. Notice the IP address that was assigned to that specific uh, machine. We can verify this also from the command line, show clients, and that has listed the client. The name, uh, as you can see, the first column is called user, and the IP is what has been assigned in VLAN 51 with the MAC address of the client and the access point name is the MAC address of that AP and the role that will have been assigned is secure WLAN. If we double check on the local also interface of the uh, instant AP, you'll notice there's one client which we have connected and that client has uh, the very same details that we have seen before. Obviously, you can look at more details of that client if need be, but the focus here is simply speaking to just have a look at what VLAN uh, does the client get assigned to. And the same here, we can see the user, and you can, if you like, uh, from the uh, airwave, you can look at details of that user, clarity, UCNC, traffic analysis, and more details of if you would like to. We're gonna try now to connect with a different username, um, and that username is gonna be a contractor. They, these users have already been configured on our authentication server, ClearPass. So we will supply or provide the username, in this case, contractor and the password whatever password we have selected and then we connect once that connection has been successful what you would expect to see is simply speaking a vlan 205 as per our conditions this means our conditions for assignment of the vlan or the vlan assignment have worked and simply speaking the client ended up in the expected vlan as we wanted that client to end up in so here is an example you can clearly see the IP address has changed and uh, the, that's the dynamic assignment of that VLAN. So all of that has been done from within Airwave because we have enabled instant config mode, which is the GUI kind of interface configuration for that specific um, instant AP. And now we can fully manage that instant AP from uh, from the airwave uh, on the local interface of that instant AP 
you'll find that you only have read-only access to that specific instant AP. Obviously, you can see the client has been connected or is connected now. Um, and you can see other things on the client like clarity. Look, this is useful in troubleshooting um, cases where you can find out uh, about DHCP authentication, association, and so on, DNS. You can clearly see here, this is the local interface, and that local interface you can only do read-only, issue diagnostics command, and so on. Now we're going to change this uh, group back uh, and disable instant GUI interface. This means you will immediately move uh, the devices uh, that are inside the group from being fully managed on Airwave into read only. And you will notice uh, once you have these devices listed, you notice a lock has been placed next to the conf under the configuration column next to the uh, configuration status. And you notice now on the local interface, we have full access we can do configuration. Thank you very much and appreciate your call.